there my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm working watercolour again. Uh, it's a little giraffe with sort of a surreal background I'm going to be doing today. Um, it's very stylized, so just bear with me on that one and it's in memory of my uh, best friend Dawn whose birthday it would have been this coming Thursday so her passion was giraffe so this is in memory of her. Okay, so we're working today on Archie's Aquarelle cold press paper. I have stretched it, so I dunked it in um, a sink of water for about five to seven minutes, took the paper out, let the uh, water drain off, stapled it to a board and dried it flat. So the first thing I did was I mixed up some Windsor & Newton Artist watercolour turquoise, uh, mixed quite a uh, thick mixture and spattered it over the wet paper and this is to get it to stain in areas. Now I've sprayed it with water again going over it with a flat brush that's a two inch flat and as you can see where the droplets hit the paper they've actually stained the paper that's what I wanted. I wanted the back part of the background to replicate um, the pattern on the giraffe so I got what I wanted there so now I'm just dabbing off the um, excess moisture from the surface of the giraffe. The giraffe is masked out with a bit of frisket and a little bit of masking fluid. Okay, so that's all nice and uh, even now on the background and the giraffe and surrounding washi tape is dry. Mixing up a little bit more paint there to the right, you can see in the palette. And it's the Windsor & Newton Artist Colours um, that come in the tubes. Just mix some of that up. Today I'm going to be using Windsor & Newton Artist Watercolour, the type you get in the tubes. And I'm also going to be using the Faber-Castell Watercolour Pencils. That's the Albert Dura. Now as you can see, I'm just working in some darks. So the background, all in all, took about, I believe, 7 to 10 layers to build up to what I actually wanted and I'll explain a little bit more about the background when we go on to the next clip. So all I'm doing now, I'm working wet into wet, I haven't dried the paper at all, <clears throat> excuse me, the paper's still damp and I want to keep working the background while it's still damp if I want to get an out of focus effect because if I let the paper dry and then began to add paint I'd have hard edges to contend with and that's not something I wanted in this piece for the background anyway. So yeah going on a little bit more paint, a little bit more paint and with ev every time I mixed up a new batch of paint I thickened the consistency consistency I added less water so the the pigment would become uh, a lot denser and there you can see the background finished I just went on with some more blues some violets again with the Windsor & Newton artist watercolor and then um, right at the very end I mixed up some um, artist white paint that's also by uh, Windsor & Newton watercolor white and just using um, a spattering effect, I just flicked it on with a paintbrush. T I took the washi tape off. Obviously, the first lot of washi tape was orange. Took that off because that by this time it had seen a lot of wear and tear. So I took that washi tape off, replaced it with this nice lilac washi tape, um, just to complement the colours in the painting. Not that it really matters, but hey ho, whatever keeps you happy. And it was also Dawn's favourite colour, lilac, so I kept that in mind too. So new washi tape on. Um, make sure um, when I took the masking tape and the masking fluid off that the drawing underneath wasn't affected and it wasn't, it was fine. I'd sketched that on with a mechanical HB pencil. And now I can start on the giraffe, which is the, for me, the fun bit. So uh, I've got a reference photograph I took at Chester Zoo and it's a very young giraffe and it was just laying down um, in the yard area in front of the stables where the, the stabled area for the giraffes um, but I wanted to represent it in a dreamlike quality so it's like working for a client actually I just thought what would Dawn have liked had she been around now for me to do this painting for her and I knew she liked the colour lilac um, and the soft and gentle tones and it's 
very dreamlike quality so I just went with that and if you ever do any commission work for a client it is nice to take in those sort of ideas from your client what room are they going to hang it in what are their favorite colors what are their what sort of mood things do they like if they haven't got an idea of what they want then you've got to prize that out of them so to speak so uh, in Dawn's case I knew her really really well like I said she was my best friend um, unfortunately she passed away so this is done in memory of her and with her in mind creating the colours and the composition and everything like that so it is stylized. anyway back to the painting so we're going on with lilacs um, to begin with I mixed this lilac myself through this painting as I said I'm, I used um, the Windsor and Newton artist watercolour tubes for the background just to I wanted the pigment there and then wanted to get it done and out of the way for the giraffe itself I'm actually using the Faber-Castell watercolour pencils uh, they're called the Albert Dura. if you look at the video on my channel um, squirrel red squirrel in watercolor or red squirrel with watercolor pencils it actually shows you how I use the watercolor pencils and what I do is I have a plastic palette I've used a, a very fine grit sandpaper and I've sanded the inside of each well of the palette to make it rough then I rub the pencil each whatever color I want I rub the pencil you know the pigment into the palette and as the pigment glides across the roughened area it leaves pigment there and then all I do is using a pipette add a couple of drops of water distilled water and give it a quick stir with a paintbrush and hey presto you've got your paint so that is how I'm using the uh, watercolor pencils for the draft painting today so it just saves me getting all my pans out my watercolor pans out I've got the pencils to the side of me I don't have to do any mixing unless I want to because there's you know there's enough colors there to see you through a whole painting and it's easy because this painting is rather small it's only a nine inch by uh, 12 inch so and I'd not got any big areas to cover so I didn't need a lot of pigment at any one time so that's why I went for the watercolor pencils so all I'm doing is a base coat. I'm in my head. I'm just trying to figure out how dark I want this giraffe to go. I've done a thumbnail sketch of how dark I want it to go. As you can see there, it's working quite well at the minute with the the lilac-y pink undertones on the giraffe, and you can actually see the background. The background is more turquoisey than it's showing on here, although that might be my monitor. Uh, it seemed to film okay so hopefully on your monitor at home or on your tablet screen or phone screen whatever you're looking at this video on the colours hopefully are showing a, um, true and, and the background is a turquoise tone and as you can see the top of the background can you see now where that spattering effect has added texture to the background the initial turquoise the staining effect you colours will either stain or they won't you know some pigments will stain more than others and if you're actually looking for a, to do a textured background like this then look for the staining colours but I'm going to tell you once they're on they're on you know you can't lift them back off um, now you saw how quickly I worked right at the beginning and it was only speeded up to 150 but I did really work very quickly and uh, yeah it's staying just the way I wanted it to and it's very random because I was spattering the background so very very random indeed okay back to the giraffe so we've got all the main um, patches of skin of skin coloring and now we're doing the little tufts on the top and layer by layer um, I'm darkening certain areas of this giraffe now it was quite a slow process but I really really enjoyed it and I think sometimes if you're going to work on a piece you're in, in a whole lifetime you're only going to get the chance to do so many pieces of artwork so do the ones that you love and if anybody asks you to do a painting and you think oh I don't really want to do that then you're best just to say 
uh, I'd rather not. For the simple reason is, if you don't enjoy a piece of artwork, it, it'll show in the end result. So choose things that you like to paint. Don't paint for a certain market or things like that. Just paint because it's something you want to do and you'll find that your artwork turns out a lot better for it. So here you can see the, the paint quite easily dispersing, which means in that area I did apply a little bit of water first and then work in wet into wet. So I've got several videos on my channel now um, to do with watercolour. I'm currently working on one to do with gouache, so that will be coming up um, hopefully next week, hopefully get it finished, for, ready for next week. Uh, but I think watercolour, because it's something I started with when I was very young, I was about four, I believe, it's just sort of second nature. And some people who are used to using pencils have been asking, how do you get control with a brush? And the simple fact is you just practice. And brushes make a big difference. And everybody who's watched my videos up to now go oh no she's going to mention the brush again and I am this brush is phenomenal it's by Rosemary and Co it's a series three four four and it's a number six and I use it more or less in every water-based painting that I create it's phenomenal if you want to go in with fine detail don't go for a small brush with only a few little tiny hairs. You know, people use a, a zero or a double zero. The trouble is they can't hold, because the shortness of the, the hairs, they can't hold very much water, hence they can't hold very much pigment. So you're forever having to dip into your paint and back to your painting, dip into your paint and back to your painting. Whereas the length of the hairs on this brush, and it is synthetic, it's completely vegan no animals were harmed in the making of this brush um, because of the length and the quality of the hair in this brush it is phenomenal it holds so much water it holds so much pigment but it still comes to a very very fine point I can do all the detailing I want with this brush it, it really is a tremendous brush so if you're going to treat yourself to one brush this year for water-based mediums and you like working the sort of size and style that I do then treat yourself to one of these. It's a British um, company Rosemary and & Co and I'll list everything that I'm working with today down below in the description below. If you do have any subjects or any mediums that you'd like to see me cover please drop them in the description below so not in the description that'd be daft in the comments below and uh, I'm slowly working my way through the list now um, I do have everybody's comment comments written down now and I'm ticking them off as I'm achieving them so yeah if, you, if there's something you want me to to do on a video then just pop it in the comments below that'd be great if you haven't liked this video please like and share with your family and friends or just share my channel in general, that would be great. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Back to the painting. So the patches have all been painted in and now I'm doing a second layer. So now I'm toning the areas around the patches and also over the top of the patches. So watercolour, doesn't matter if you're using pans, tubes, or a good quality pen, a watercolour pencil, such as this one. Um, they're very translucent, which means you can see through them. Light can travel through them to the areas below. So the first layer was the patches. The second layer was a tonal wash. So you can see right the way over the giraffe now, there's like a tone, a gentle tone of an orangey, it's sort of an orange cinnamon sort of colour that I mixed and now I'm going on with a third layer so popping the patches back in and I did concentrate on the face um, I've got the reference image up in front of me on the iPad I don't print anything off I sketch from the iPad um, I just don't bother wasting ink printing things off it's not environmentally friendly and I'd rather do it this way so I've got the reference image in front of me 
but I can't go too what's the word I, I can't mirror the reference image too much because the colors were on the image on the iPad weren't the same as what I wanted to create in the painting if that makes sense the photograph was taken on a very cold day um, the image came out a little bit darker than I'd anticipated but the pose was then it was the pose that I'm after so now I'm just referencing the shapes more than anything that I'm seeing on the reference image and I'm reproducing those on this painting but in the colours and tones that I want that's a quicker way of saying it if you are out photographing subjects um, one thing I have learned is that if the lighting isn't very good out then photograph your subjects in black and white and you'll get some really stunning um, results doing it that way back to the painting so going on a lot darker now and bringing in some warmer tones at the moment I was sort of mm, I was humming and ahhing about doing the giraffe really warm but then I didn't want it to detract from the background of being very cool obviously cool colours um, make things look further away so I did want the background to look cool anyway but I didn't want there to be too much contrast between warms of the giraffe and cools of the background they did need to gel together a little bit to make them look like a complete painting so I did that to begin with by bringing the lilacs from the background into the subject itself that helps gel the two together adding the warms I'm now balancing the warms with the cools in the giraffe so the warm tones with the cool lilac tones so one doesn't overpower the other so I'm keeping that in mind as I'm working through the painting now so again I've wet the paper with some pigment and now just with a clean damp brush I'm just lifting a little bit of that pigment away if you do like lifting pigments don't use pigments that stain you know a heavy staining pigment will be much harder and sometimes impossible to lift back off so keep that in mind too and if you are getting to an area of painting where you know you are going to have to do some lifting of colour to um, reveal the layers underneath then it's better to dampen your paper first in that area to help you to lift the colours back off Obviously you've got less control then of where the colour actually goes but at least you will be able to lift it off. So I've worked some more darks around the face, popped in the eye with a little bit of sepia, dark sepia and the little tufts as well uh, with a little bit of dark sepia. So nowhere did I use black, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't want to use black because that would really detract from the dreamy feel that I wanted to create in this painting. Towards the very end, once the giraffe was complete, once the giraffe was completed, it did still look not in situ as such. So what I did, I covered the giraffe's head and upper neck and then just flicked some more white paint over it to just um, bond the two together, bond the background and the animal together which worked really well, you'll see that in a bit. Okay so lots of layers going on now, working in some warms and what I found is I was experimenting with these patches, I was listening, oh I was so relaxed, I love it, I love painting, I was sitting with a coffee, I'd got a podcast playing, got my paints out so I've got the aromas of the coffee and the colours of the paints and the podcast on I was relaxed it was lovely and I was just playing with these patches of colour on this giraffe's neck and that's it just play and have some fun if you're creating art you're an artist you're creating something that hasn't existed before so just revel in that oh, and just take your time if it takes you a week to create a painting then it's a week well done it's uh, it's make it a joy don't ever let it be a labor let, or if it is let it be a labor of love just enjoy creating things that have never been seen by anybody else before so with each patch I was experimenting did it work better layering the layers upon each patch wet on wet or 
dry on dry and that's it that's all there was to it really I just finished off the patches put a little bit of a lilac wash over the body and then washing it away into the neck speckled the body with some white spots of colour signed it removed the acid free washi tape and there you have him all done so that's a tribute to Dawn, my friend who passed away. Would it will be her birthday tomorrow? Yeah, March the fourth tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Um, stay safe, stay creative, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.